This might have been the greatest comic book sale I've ever participated in. Hey there, today I have an unboxing video, and in this video I'm going to open up an order of comic books that I placed with Things From Another World, where they had recently had this sort of blowout sale of uh, retailer incentives, exclusives, uh, pretty much books across the board, where it was uh, not really like well advertised. I always uh, question sometimes these stores and, and the marketing department, or lack thereof, where if you're going to have a sale like this and discount your books this steep, don't you want to let people know ahead of time, like almost drum up the hype a little bit, schedule it, whatever you're going to do. It's not just things from another world too, it's Midtown. I end up going to these places uh, on a daily basis and a lot of times right there at the top of the page, it talks about a particular flash sale or daily sale that they're having or weekly sale, sometimes in the case of Midtown. And what I try to do is I always try to be ready. I, I try to have some money set aside in my collecting budget that allows me to strike when these sales present themselves. And in this example, uh, I think I did really, really well. Uh, I was not you know, anticipating or prepared to place an order with things from another world. I honestly don't really do a lot of purchasing from them unless it's a very, very specific retailer incentive that I, I need to have and, and I can pre-order it and find it there. I don't do a lot of like current comic book shopping on tfaw.com just because I've probably already pre-ordered those books elsewhere and already have them. But in this case, because they were having such a drastically discounted comic book sale, I had to take advantage of it. Now, before I show you the books, there's one last thing. I feel like when the sale started, I don't think that all of the comic books were priced correctly. And I will go through this later on when I show you what I paid for the books, but there are some examples of some very high retailer incentive ratio books that were discounted alongside other books for the same discount. And I don't believe that was on purpose. I actually think that was a, an error in their formula. And the only thing I can think of, I don't really have any evidence of how they calculated or figured out which books were going to receive the discount is there was some sort of formula or filter that they used to find certain books and say, okay, set all of these to a 50% discount or set them all for some minimum price. And some of the retailer incentives, I think, kind of accidentally fell into their result set and they applied the discount to those books. I did go back a day later when the sale was still happening and I found the same books and they were not as cheap as I had picked them up for. So I do feel fortunate, uh, but the, the lesson that I learned and the lesson I hope to pass along is, you know, you may see a sale and think, well, I want to participate in it early and often because I don't want the books to sell out, but you also want to check it out in case there are some price discrepancies or just errors uh, where some of the books are listed for a lot cheaper than they should be. But I was worried that something was going to happen, and the next notification I got was that the order was packed and shipped and being delivered. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and open up this pretty significant order that I placed from TFAW. I'll show you the books that I got, and if you stay to the end, I'll show you what I paid for the books, and you can see some of the steep discounts that I got through this order, and then I'll compare what I paid for the books to fair market value and check to see if any of these books have value if I were to get them professionally graded. So let's open up this order. All right, here is the order that I received from TFAW. It was sent via FedEx, so let's go ahead and get it opened up. All right, got through the madness and the chaos that is packing peanuts. Uh, I want to go through the comics and show you what I picked up, and I'll go through them very quickly because there are a lot of books to get to, but I'm very excited to show you what I got through this Things from Another World sale, so let's get to it. Here we go. First book, Star Wars, The High Republic, The Blade Number 1. This is a miniseries 
that accompanies the Star Wars The High Republic Volume 2. So sometimes these side stories have significant characters and first appearances and things like that. All right, more Star Wars. We have Star Wars The Mandalorian number one. This is the 1 in 10 concept art variants. They did a 1 in 10 concept art for each of the issues in the volume one of The Mandalorian. Star Wars Obi-Wan number one. This is the 1 in 10 quote-unquote movie variant. Uh, the Obi-Wan series on Disney Plus kind of fueled the comic book series, and this is the photo cover variant uh, featuring Ewan McGregor. Next is Tiger Division number one. This is the 1 in 10 design variant by Kreese Lee. This is Avengers number one. This is the latest volume of Avengers. This is the 1 in 50 full art variant by Derek Chu featuring Scarlet Witch. Next is Batman 130. This is the 1 in 25 by David Marquez. Here's Demon Day's Blood Feud number one. This is the Del Mundo 1 in 25 variant. Uh, I love Del Mundo. He doesn't do a ton of covers, and so I went back and picked up this one. Here is Hulk number nine, the Dan Panosian 1 in 25. Love Panosian as an artist. And even though this Hulk series kind of came and went, and now we have a new volume called Incredible Hulk, I still like this cover by Panosian. Next is Stuff of Nightmares, number one from Boom Studios. This is a 1 in 25. Then we have Edge of Spider-Verse, number one. This is the 1 in 10 Humberto Ramos design variant. Then we have the Sandman Universe, Nightmare Country. This is the 1 in 50. And same title, Sandman Universe, Nightmare Country, number one. This is the 1 in 25 cover by Kelly Jones. After that, we have two copies of Miles Morales, Spider-Man, number one. And this is the 1 in 25. Daredevil, number one. This is also the 1 in 25. This is the Ryan Stegman variant. Uh, this one is not an incentive. It's just a back issue of... Fantastic Four 52, this is the facsimile edition reprinting the first appearance of Black Panther. Next is The Closet, number one, and this is the Things From Another World exclusive. So along with the retailer incentives, they had TFA exclusives that were also steeply discounted. So at some point, once I started to kind of fill out my order, I would go in and search for TFA exclusive and I would sort by price, lowest to highest, and I could see all of the TFAW exclusives that were on sale. Uh, as a big Tinian fan, uh, the closet probably hasn't gotten as much attention as some of his other series have, uh, but I do collect pretty much everything he writes and was able to get this TFAW exclusive at a good deal. Here's some more TFAW exclusives. This is Star Wars The High Republic number one, and I picked up three copies. This was sort of me testing the system just to see if I could, in fact, buy more than one. If this was sort of a, a limit one per customer, it was not. Uh, this is also by Dan Panosian. And I remember getting this uh, during a previous sale that TFAW had, and I guess they had more of these because uh, they were even more discounted this time around. Here is another TFAW exclusive, Sandman Nightmare Country number one. And they did two versions of this. This is the sort of the throwback trade version using the original Sandman uh, font lettering. And then here is the, I think what they're calling the modern version of Nightmare Country number one. So same book, just two different uh, treatments on the trade. All right, about halfway through here, the next book is Batman 134. This is the art germ. This is an open order variant featuring Punchline. I picked up two copies there. Noctera number 14, something about this cover. I just love it. A cover by Tony Daniel. This is cover A and would have paid cover price for it, but got it as part of the sale. More art germ. This is Power Girl special number one. This is the standard cover. There's also a foil version. This is just the regular open order variant. So I picked up uh, two copies of this. Uh, She-Hulk number four. I, I always, uh, whenever there's a sale, I always search for uh, Daughterman variant when I put in my search phrase just to see, because uh, I'm always interested in picking up these variants with the different character costume iterations. Would love to have a full set in a 9.8. So I grabbed one copy of this, and then also grabbed Star Wars Darth Vader, black, white, and red. 
This is an awesome cover by Gabriel Del Otto, and this is just an open order variant cover. There is a full art version that's a one in a hundred. I didn't see that on there. Um, so I went ahead and grabbed the open order variants with the trade. More Star Wars High Republic. This is just cover A, issue number seven, and this is also cover A, issue number 10, trying to fill out a full run of High Republic volume two. Another series I keep finding variants for Twig. This is Twig number one. This is the one in 10 full art version of cover A. All right, now this one I was curious about, and yep, uh, they did end up fulfilling it, which was really strange. So I'll get into this when I go through the numbers, but this is, it's uh, taped together, unfortunately. So I'm trying to remove the stickers. And this is Miles Morales, Spider-Man number one. This is the Zoo or Zoo. Things from Another World bundle exclusive where you got the version with the trade and the full art. I thought this was a really, really well done cover. Can't stand <laughs> Tifa's bags and boards. As you can see here, it's uh, the comics just sliding around. So I'll have to check for damages there. Uh, you could see it a little bit better on the back, probably where the comic is longer than the bag and board. I don't quite understand that. So hopefully these will grade out and I don't damage them further by trying to handle the books. So I will quickly replace these with my own bags and boards. But uh, this was listed as a singular item as a bundle. And I was almost certainly expecting them to just give me one or the other, but I got both of them, which is awesome. And the last two, uh, more Power Girl, Power Girl special number one. This is the Tula Lote, one in 25. I love just about everything Lotte does. I know she just won the Eisner for Barnstormers, so huge congratulations to her, but big fan of hers. And these two complete the full order of comics that I picked up from Things From Another World. So these are the books, lots of retailer incentives, lots of exclusives, and hopefully you're curious to know like what exactly did I pay for these books? What kind of discounts are we really talking about here? So let me show you what I actually paid for these, and I'll show you the comparison between the price I paid and fair market value to see if I added any value to my collection. Okay, here is the order that I placed with Things From Another World on July 14th, 2023. It took about a week for them to fulfill the order and get it sent out, and you can start to see some of the prices that I paid. Uh, it was pretty incredible. Um, these were books that I was able to pick up through this recent sale for a dollar or two dollars an issue. And then in a few cases, I paid, I think probably like the 50% off or 60% off rate, but the majority of these books were simply listed on their site as part of this steep discount sale where they just relisted a lot of their books for a dollar or, or two bucks. Uh, so I ended up spending $105.04. I was absolutely certain that I unlocked free shipping and I kept adding to my order thinking, okay, I, I'm going to get over the $75 minimum to unlock free shipping. I got so scared and nervous that something was going to happen to this order where these books were either going to be sold out or there was going to be some sort of pricing adjustment while the books were in the cart. Thankfully, this didn't happen, but I did end up just checking out and making sure that I got this order submitted while the prices were what they were on tfaw.com. So this was a 37 book order. I'm not gonna review all 37 lines of this spreadsheet with you, but just to highlight some of these, and we can do that by moving over to the value column. So column U, uh, typically I will have the cover price fair market value. These are all brand new books or recently released books, so they should all be somewhere around 9.4 or 9.6. So leveraging the highest available fair market value from cover price certainly makes sense with these books. So if I look at column L and, that, and that's the actual price that I paid with tax included and compare that to column U, which is the cover price fair market value with the total cost represented in column Z, in column double A here, we can see the raw value add. Now, according to what I paid versus the cover price for market value, it looks like I've added almost $350 of value into my collection by simply being ready and being prepared and being aware of this sale happening at Things From Another World 
and, and not necessarily being prepared that the sale was coming, but being prepared to strike, uh, to have the funds available and the time and the resources to quickly look up values and to find books where it makes sense to pick up at this steeply discounted price. You don't want to just kind of buy everything for a dollar or, or one of each. You have to really be selective still, even during a sale, because you have to understand that stores are having sales for a reason. They want to get inventory out. And so if you're going to say, okay, I'll take some of that inventory off your hands, you want to make sure that you're not stuck with bad books. So I do feel like I am strategic enough that I'm adding positive value. Uh, you'll see not every book uh, has positive value. Sometimes cover price isn't reporting something. You don't know if it's because there are no sales, uh, but here's an example of something that's in the negative. But for the most part, all of these books have some positive value that's contributing to my collection. Uh, right now, as we speak, that High Republic number one, the TFAW exclusive, I got those for a dollar each. I was really shocked that uh, they were listed at a dollar. So they were taking these uh, typically like 15 or $20 TFAW exclusives and pretty much giving them away at a dollar. Cover price has that book at over $50. I don't believe that to be entirely true. I don't think I could get $50 for each of those books. But the fact that at some point there were some sales that contributed to that fair market value makes me feel good about picking up those books for a dollar. Uh, Stuff of Nightmares, number one, here's a, a double digit positive value add. It's $12 in cover price. Again, bought it for a dollar. The dollar sixty six that you see here, that's with the bag and board service, which I think is ridiculous because their, their, their bags are way too oversized and the books slide around in there. It's not, but it does add some protection where it's worth paying the additional amount. The tax and the shipping and handling, where I take the bag and board service and the shipping and handling and distribute that across the books and then calculate the tax as well on top of the books. So that's where the dollar book is really a dollar sixty six. Still, I consider it a one to two dollar or maybe two to three dollar type of sale that I'm participating in. So getting a $12 book for under two bucks. That makes a lot of uh, financial sense to me. So I went ahead and did that. Here is another example, uh, Sandman Universe Nightmare Country number one, the Martin Simmons version with the modern trade uh, cover price has that book at $40. I paid $1.66 for that exclusive. Very happy with that. And those Nightmare Country books haven't really taken off. That Frizen variant, that's the real catch. That's the one in a hundred. I love that. One of Frizen's best, uh, maybe her best all time. Uh, I think I might have said that before about some of her other covers, but uh, one of my favorites, let's put it that way. The one in 25 and one in 50 have not taken off. Still over $10 of value sitting at 13 and 14 respectively. I paid a dollar. So that one in 50 Bueno variant cover I got for a dollar, um, really happy, really, really glad. I Again, I don't know if it was a pricing error or whatever, but at the time that I was looking through the site, it was listed for a dollar. I bought it for a dollar, was happy to add that. Same for the one in 25, so a nice value add there. The Power Girl Special was the most expensive one that I paid over $9 and then over $10 if you add in shipping and tax to acquire those books, and they're only $7. A lot of things happening there. Tula Lote on cover art, a 1 in 25 incentive featuring Power Girl. I missed out on the pre-order of those, so I just wanted to grab a couple of copies, and it was discounted from the ratio price, which was obviously $25, but then sometimes it's discounted to $17.49. So I still felt like roughly $9.25 or whatever I ended up paying for it, plus all the additional fees. I still felt like that was a good deal because I just wanted the book. So that wasn't necessarily a value add. I knew that when I made the purchase, but I was okay with it. Looking for some of the other value books, here is the the Zoo or Zoo TFAW exclusive of Miles number one. Now the one with the trade does not have any fair market value right now. No reported sales that cover price is included in their system. But the full art copy, they're reporting that as having a value for 20 bucks. I got the bundle for a dollar. So that's where I'm putting the purchase price for each of those at a dollar eleven because essentially I'm it's, it's a they were 50 cent books. Uh, so I, I don't know why I didn't just buy 50 of those. Um, again, just not maybe thinking clearly or certainly now in hindsight, I, I don't know why I did I did that. Of course, now in hindsight, I don't know why I did that. A lot of times I'm trying to get 
one or two copies or maybe three at most of some of these and I just didn't think to go into my cart and just bump up the quantity on these because I would love to go back and get that bundle for a dollar over and over again. The full art version in a blue label slab by CGC would look amazing and fantastic. And we'll look at the CGC grades too to see if uh, any of these books have value if they were to be graded. But nevertheless, uh, getting that bundle for a dollar I think was just a huge value add for me. $8.35 on the 25 copy of Miles Number no. 1 and the Hulk 9 and Pinozian. I got each of those for a dollar. Those are those 1 and 25s. The Closet Number no. 1 has a cover price fair market value of $15. I got that also for a dollar, so a nice $13.35 value add there. And the other one I paid a little bit for was the Avengers Number no. 1. That was a 1 in 50. I ended up paying $19.72. So a modest $2.20 uh, value add. Still positive there, but really like that Derek Chu cover featuring Scarlet Witch and wanted to acquire that at a reasonable price. So I, I wanted to pick that up as well. So overall, again, uh, a raw value add of almost $350. Now, what if I were to get these books graded? Do any of these have any value? And if we assume, you know, brand new books being near mint, Let's see if any of them have value in a 9.4. I Probably many of them don't. Yeah, very few. Twig number one at 26 bucks. The Del Otto, Darth Vader, 21. So these being brand new books, uh, you know, the, here's 20 bucks for the Miles book. Uh, 36 for the Fantastic Four 52 facsimile. I don't know about that. The real question is, what are these books worth if they're 9.8s? Now, I've had a good experience with TFA. I'm able to get a lot of their books as 9.8 candidates. So let's see if we flip them all, what kind of values we're looking at here. And if we move to column A, B, we'll see that if I were to send all of these books in and they did hit a 9.8, I'd only be adding $308.36. It would be actually beneficial just to keep them all raw. And I think some of it has to do with the fact that they're new books or the pricing by cover price. You know, it isn't always accurate. It's really the only source that I have for raw books, unless I'm going to create my own price guide uh, using cover price. For example, the raw value for High Republic 1, the TFA, it's sitting at $53, but it has no value if it's a CGC 9.8. You know, again, I'm just trying to do the best I can with the numbers that I have. But let's look at what does have value. Star Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi, that 10 copy version featuring Ewan McGregor, on the photo cover, $82.50 for that book. So if that's a 9.8 candidate, uh, really good margin there. Having only paid $1.66, it's a $48.16 value add on that book. So that looks great. That Miles Morales, number one, the Zoo or Zoo Tifa, full art version, $64 for that book in a 9.8. You see a lot of like 35 to 55. That's kind of the range for a lot of these books. But when you're getting from them for a dollar or two, you know, and then you're tacking on the CGC fees, you're looking at, you know, somewhere between 30 and $40. Um, so if you're collecting these as 9.8s and they're hitting about that 45 to $55 range, yeah, it makes sense. These, these are nice additions to your collection. You're able basically getting 9.8 slabs at a discount by participating in some of these sales. And the only book that's over 100 is that Avengers 150 copy. And I knew that going into it, and that's why I did pick up that book and ended up paying, again, not full 50 copy ratio incentive price, which would have been either $50 or maybe something like $39.99 or whatever the TFA price is for the, the pre-order. But paying $19.72 and taking a chance at $100 at 9.8. So not like one book after another that has some CGC value of like $100 or $150 or something like that, but just a lot of solid... I would say typical values that you would expect to, uh, new books to have. Uh, not every brand new book is worth slabbing, and I think that is something that we've all kind of learned the hard way. Um, you, you can't just buy every new release and take every 9-8 candidate and slab it and feel like, okay, I'm going to make at least $15 and up on each of these. Uh, the majority of brand new books in a 9.8 are not worth more than it costs to get them slabbed. So to see some of these values... Uh, $64, uh, $55, $53, uh, $55, I'm just kind of eyeballing some of the numbers, $51, $100 here and there, right? I think that seeing that, that makes me feel good, makes me feel like, okay, I did add some 
significant books, some interesting, desirable books, some books that have some sale history where I feel like not only are a lot of these covers great, I love that I'm adding more incentives and more store exclusives, uh, covers with artists that I love, uh, covers with artists that I think are uh, very mainstream and popular. And what that means and what that tells me is that there's going to be some ongoing level of desirability for these books, which then makes me feel comfortable and more confident in acquiring these and adding these to my collection because I know that if I did need to move them down the road or maybe I wanted to take a few of these, get them graded and sell them off where I could help pay for this order, I, I feel like I would have a good chance at getting some value back for my investment. Let me know what you think. Uh, do you participate Do you in some of these types of sales? And, and do you look out for them? Uh, how do you keep track of them with so many different online stores? I'd love to hear your feedback on how you approach this sort of thing. So feel free to leave a comment below. And if you like what I do here, please consider becoming a channel member by clicking the join button under this video or visiting my page at youtube.com slash moneyballcomics and you can join and access my member page there where you can get access to member-only videos and an opportunity to participate in my monthly giveaways and other channel member perks. Thanks for watching, happy collecting, and see you next time.